Good to see you again. Um, did you guys see some of these papers on the table? No. <laughs> um, upstairs? No. There were about 12 of them. Um, the th one was about biodiversity and human health. The other one was about biodiversity and the well-being of women. The other one was about biodiversity, uh, the foundation of sustainable development. The other one was biodiversity, natural solutions for water security. And then there was another one for biodiversity, cities and slums. And then there was another one for biodiversity, food security and nutrition. Another one for biodiversity, supporting sustainable development. How many of them think that is important in this? I'll go through them again. <laughs> Human health. All of them are connected to biodiversity, okay? Human health. The well-being of women. Sustainable development. <coughs> Water security. Cities and slums. Food security and nutrition. Su supporting development. How many of you have anything that is important? We're going to talk here. I'm not going to talk to myself. <laughs> this is going to be a conversation. Yeah. It's a dialogue. Okay? How many of you have heard anything that is important? Yeah. What is it? What? All of them are important. That's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> so I don't want to talk with you anymore until later. All of them are important. This talk or this conversation is going to focus on strategic goal A, which is sort of the preoccupation that, uh, especially target one, that the IUC and CEC has taken as a responsibility. And we will be talking extensively about values and, and uh, a little bit about behavior. And the reason why we will talk about it is because, uh, as you know, the CBD, all of you uh, signatories of, you're trying to mainstream biodiversity so that it addresses the underlying causes of biodiversity for us. And you want to mainstream that across government and society. And so you've come up with a series of targets, okay? Target one is that, that by a certain day, it's, it reads like an instruction, okay? By a certain day, 2020, people are aware of the values of biodiversity and the steps or behaviors that they can take to conserve biodiversity and use it systemically. That's target one. Target two, oh, I thought she was giving me a hug. <laughs> target two is, biodiversity values are integrated into, uh, that by that, that Sunday, biodiversity is integrated into, biodiversity values are integrated into national and local development poverty reduction strategies and planning processes and all the other stuff that happens in other governments, we, the Convention on Biodiversity, we're going to tell you governments that you have one more value that you have to be aware of. We're going to tell you, society, that you have one more value that you have to be aware of. We'll tell you, governments, you have one more value that we're going to make you put it into your sustainable development because we, as the Convention, values biodiversity. Okay. There's something a little arrogant about that. And then there's something a little bit ignorant about that. The assumption here is that if people are aware of biodiversity, they will act as we want them to act. Okay? That's not necessarily true. Awareness does not make people change their behavior. I'm a smoker, I'm aware that I'm going to get cancer and I'm going to die, and I still can't quit smoking. Awareness in itself doesn't change behavior. <laughs> Second, we're saying that people, the assumption that if people should be aware, assumes that people are not aware of the values of our values. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody who is not aware of some value for our diversity? Who doesn't think that potatoes is good food and so they value nutrition? Or who doesn't think that the owl is a bad or a good omen depending on what culture they come from? Do you know anybody who doesn't have a biodiversity value? No, if you know that, you should tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find that person. But they may not recognize it as a biodiversity value. Exactly. And we think that biodiversity value, as we recognize it, is more important than your own value, so we tell you what your value should be. And we expect it to work. When we say people don't recognize, we're saying they don't know what we know, and they should know what we know. 
because we don't have time to know what they know. Okay? It's like going to the doctor, and the doctor decides that they're not going to figure out why you're sick. They just look at you and say, well, have some Quinamax. Because I used Quinamax on the other person and it worked. That's true. The reality is that we, the people who are making decisions about values, about diversity, we actually don't understand the values of these different cultures. We don't understand the values of uh, Chinese government people. We don't have time to understand the values of the people of the Amazon, or the values or the cultures of the people in South Africa, or in some rural place in Northern West Africa, or in some place in China. We don't understand those values, but somehow we're going to give them another value, the biodiversity value. That might not necessarily be the same kind of value that the people already have. Okay, and we should not forget that these people have been living with biodiversity their whole lives. Some biodiversity already has some kind of value to them. We want to make that. So we, the people making decisions about values, actually have some learning to do. Learn about the values that people already ascribe to biodiversity. And I'll tell you why. Values are some really complicated things. And one of the things that is really important about values is that they are very trans-situational. Values don't change. I'm a Cameroonian living in the United States, and I still have my Cameroonian values with me. I might struggle to live in the United States sometimes because my values conflict with the values of people in the United States. Values are very, very stable. They are also about goals. Values is what helps you sort of <coughs> think about things in a way that makes you want to act. So if you see somebody yelling or screaming at somebody, you say, I don't like, I don't value violence. I don't value confrontation. You walk away from it. Okay? We have values that move with us all we go, and they are so if they are, they are in the, the, to the extent that values are important, they help us determine end states or modes of conduct, that is behavior. Values inform how we act. Okay? They also are transsituational. In other words, it doesn't matter what situation you're in, your values can kick in any time. They're not something that goes away as soon as you move into a different place or in a different situation. So values are stable. And some values are more important than others. Okay? I asked you all these things where there were values, and you said all of them were important. We went to that table and we looked at all these pies, and human health was, there was only two remaining. And there was like 100 of supporting development still there. <laughs> okay? I don't, that's just one observation. And then the second one that was almost gone was women well-being. And then the third one that was almost gone was sustainable development as the foundation. Okay? I will reiterate that supporting development was still there, the pile of paper. In other words, you the people picking those papers. You've gone there and the one that you've picked out of it is this. You've already demonstrated that in the people for this working group, human health is your number one value for biodiversity. So if I come to you with two things, if I want to mainstream biodiversity, and I give you an option to communicate biodiversity as a human health issue, and I take another group and I communicate it to them as a sustainable development issue, this is going to be more of a mainstream and acceptable to those people than sustainable development. In other words, biodiversity or values have priorities. We have a whole bunch of values, and sometimes one value is more important than the other, even if all of them are important. And that is a very, very critical issue. Because if we make a mistake to communicate and align biodiversity so that it does not align with the prioritized values of a community, biodiversity will not be conserved. Again, we have to figure out what those uh, uh, values are. 
And values are acquired through socialization and dominant growth. Okay? In other words, values yield to social influence, but it takes a lot of time. It takes time for values, to, for people to acquire values. That's why it takes a lot of time to change values. The way we've, 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 uh, 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 we've stated strategic uh, uh, target one and target two, it implies that we're going to create a new value, which is biodiversity value, and then make people aware of that value without understanding how people of particular places, what kinds of value do they already associate with biodiversity. And if we do that, we can craft messages and craft techniques to align biodiversity values with already existing values for those communities who have put forward. And why is this important? It's important because values perform functions. Okay, this thing called value makes us act. They serve the interests of a person or a society. That's a function. If I do something that is against my values, I get upset about it. If I want to do something, I ask the question whether it aligns with my values or not. So my values tell me what I should do and what I should not do, what I should agree with and what I should not agree with. If you're from Africa, I'm from Africa, most of the time when people come from the CBD or the West and tell us how to conserve biodiversity, we say, oh, those white people. They're trying to change the way we act. Okay? Or they're trying to influence, they don't understand our culture, they don't understand the way we do things, and they're telling us a new thing. And usually when we buy that idea, we end up with a culture that has lost some of its own roots, and then we end up with another sort of value system that we cannot completely fully articulate and act on because it's not part of who we are. It motivates action. It's not just action, but the, the direction of the action, whether you do something for or against biodiversity, and the emotional and behavioral intensity. How much are you willing to give for biodiversity? Is it you do that only to the extent that it already aligns with values that you respect, okay, and hold true. It is also uh, serves as a standard for judging and justifying behavior. Okay, so some of you can only do certain things and not other things because of the kinds of values that you have. So values are very, very important. Okay, it helps people to cope with reality because it helps them transform all the problems into a set of specific values that they can sort of articulate or express. And that, in that process, also facilitate communicative action. By communicative action here means the things that you say that makes you want to continue to do or initiate and do something. Okay? And so values perform functions again. They ask conscious goals. They, they are a set of goals that you have set for yourself. And they do that in three fundamental contexts. One, to meet our needs as biological organisms. Two, to meet uh, the, the needs of a society, which is about coordinating social interactions. And three, it is needed to, for the smooth functioning and survival of social entities. Any group of people, for them to coexistently function, they have, a, have to have a certain set of values. Whether those values are spoken or not, they usually have a certain set of values. And the way you find out what the values really are is when you try to do something that is against those values. <laughs> Sometimes you never know what those values are until you try to act against the values, and then you get all this fire coming out, and you go, oops, these people don't like things this way. They like things this way. So values are important for survival. It's a way that you sort of keep social cohesion together. It, it functions in that way. So what distinguishes values from each other is the type of motivational goal that that value expresses. This is health, and this is sustainable development. To people, I can make a general comment about all the representatives in the working group that to them, health is more important than sustainable development. It doesn't mean that sustainable development is not important. It means that the personal health or the health of the human being is a priority to them. And that's important. Here are some examples of motivational goals. And these are universal, okay? There's about 11 of them. 
How many of you think that you have any kind of power? Power. Some form. Exactly. That's a good question. Offer what? <laughs> any offer anything? Any? How many of you think you have some form of power? Yeah. What kind of power? What kind of power do you have? What? Purchasing power. Purchasing power. Economic <laughs> power. Okay. That's what. What? That's the value. Okay. How about authority? It's a form of power too, right? Yes. All of us have some kind of authority. Inside your family. Inside your family. Inside the CBD, David has more power and authority than I do. <laughs> it is true, okay? And we have to recognize this. These are values, okay? It's human. You go to any society, there's a form of power. Some of it we don't like it, some of it we do. Okay? How about achievement? How many of you want to be successful? <coughs> Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to see themselves as being capable, right? That's a universal value. And so is hedonism. Some people like to have pleasure and sensual gratification. Pleasure, enjoying life. Um, usually I do that when I have a glass of wine before I go to bed. <laughs> That's my happy hour, okay? And some people actually go to happy hour at a bar. So we have that as hedonism, instantaneous gratification, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have stimulation as a value. We all have that. We have self-direction. Okay? We have universalism. Some people have more of these values move forward than others. So some people like are more benevolent or they value benevolence to be helpful, to be honest, to be forgiving, than they value being humble or devout. Some people value politeness and obedience more than they value being helpful. Okay? We have different values. And all these values, move forward, perform functions. So, these values are motivational goals. That's why you do certain things because you want to exercise your value of social other or your value for spirituality. You can go backwards a little bit. You do certain things because you want to be honest or because you want to be helpful or because you're just being humble or because you're just being obedient. And in some cultures, you move forward two slides. In some cultures, back, yeah. in, back. Some, yes. in some cultures, um, some of these values are more important than others. I cannot overemphasize the fact that I already know that for the people who came to the working group of the review of implementation, Human heart is their number one value of biodiversity. If you want to mainstream biodiversity to these people, you sitting here, the number one thing you should be talking about is human health. And the last thing you want to be talking about is supporting development. But I will not be surprised that this is the number one thing we use to talk about when we talk about biodiversity. In other words, because we don't, yes, and I'm not the one who put these papers over there, okay? It, it was not an experiment that I designed. I just came and noticed that this was gone. And that sustainable supporting development was still sitting on top of the pie. And nobody is picking that. They're not interested in sustainable development as much as they're interested in human health. Okay? Another thing about values is that um, how many of you have ever found yourself arguing with yourself? <laughs> yeah. How many of you don't like that? Yeah, when you you sort of like, should I go this way? Even sometimes it's just a straight. You go to a straight and there's two directions and it looks like all of them will get you there and you start doing this and you go, I just want to decide and do one. In, in psychology, we call it dissonance. So you have this argument with yourself, conflicting values. So maybe you want human help, at the same time you want supporting development. Yeah, you, can, you, you want both. And supporting development will make it so that you know, if you want to develop, you have to maybe build a freeway, have an industry that creates pollution and affects your health. So we have to understand values. They're complex 
and it demands that we take a very systematic approach to understanding the values and the priorities, how values are prioritized in different communities or different cultural settings before we figure out how to mainstream biodiversity. Okay? So, next slide. To do that, I ask, if we have to mainstream biodiversity across government and society, we must first address one thing, or two things, about target one and target two. Is it correct for us to say that people should be, by 2020, people should be aware of the values of biodiversity, people should be, and we don't even know who these people are, but they have to be aware, okay? And then, target number two is, biodiversity values by 2020 have to be integrated into the national and local development and poverty reduction strategies and planning processes and all the stuff of governments. And we don't know exactly what these development and poverty reduction strategies and planning stuff are, but most importantly, we don't know what the values of these people are, we don't know what the values of those governments are, and so we don't know what values are more pro in priority for them, and we don't know which values are less prioritized for them. Is it human health that is the priority value? Is it being polite? If the government is more of a polite, wants to be seen as a polite government, how do you communicate so that biodiversity becomes a mainstream piece of that communication? Do you say bio to conserve biodiversity is the polite thing to do? Or do you say to conserve biodiversity is going to make you develop sustainability, which is the rhetoric that we, we, we talk about all the time? Maybe in a polite government, like the government of the state of Minnesota, who are very good with social courtesy in the United States, I've lived there for nine years, if you want to talk to them about biodiversity, to mainstream biodiversity, don't talk about sustainable development. Talk about being polite. <laughs> Because I already know that being polite is something that people in Minnesota really value. But for me to do that, I have to be in Minnesota, observe those values.